Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to set up and host your very own Minecraft multiplayer server. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is create a new folder on your desktop called Minecraft Server. Now, all of your files are going to be in this folder, um, and you can manage all of your servers, you know, anything related to your server in this file. Um, so just keep it. As long as you have it somewhere you can find it, you'll be all set. Now you need to open your browser and you want to go to www.minecraft.net slash download. Now again, all of these links will be in the description below, so uh, if you're lost, you can just go ahead and read step-by-step -step instructions uh, in the description. So now you want to look for multiplayer server. When you come across this, um, look for the thing that says minecraftserver.exe. Go ahead and right-click on that, save link as, or save, oh uh, yeah, save link as. Find wherever you put your folder um, for your server, double click on that and then you should have nothing in it just hit go ahead and hit save now for now we can just minimize this open up your folder that you created earlier okay and all you want to do is just double click on it uh... something might come up this is run or whatever you know you can just go ahead and click that um, it's trusted file now you're gonna see a lot of stuff spawning it's just loading as soon as this is done you can go ahead and hit stop for now Okay and it's saving so what happens is if you just close it if you hit the X um, it's kind of going to close it uh, crash I, I guess like it's um, a crude close so it's not saving it properly and um, you can kind of mess up your files so it's better to hit stop wait till it's done and it'll close it automatically now you'll notice we have a bunch of files here uh, and really quickly I'll explain how all of them work this the file folder uh, that's your world save so it's it, by default it's called world if you create another one it'll be called world one world two um, and you can rename it whatever you want that's fine and I'll show you how to do that later in the server properties but first um, you can see banned IPs and banned players the difference is if you ban their IP no matter what account they log into um, they're banned on their computer or at their home network well if you just ban the player they can go onto a different username uh, and still get on ops this is important because the ops are basically the admins I suppose um, you can con basically have control over the server and um, build and all that sort of thing the server this is just the server log so any chat put into it uh, will pop up in here so I'll show you that later too um, so say someone's saying mean things or whatever and you want to enforce that um, instead of someone just believing their wild claims or whatever you can go into the server log and see whatever they said uh, or if someone griefs the server, you can see exactly who logs in at what time. Uh, get to the bottom of that. So it's very useful. Uh, and whitelist. Whitelist is basically if you want to only accept certain people into your server, you can add them to the whitelist. Um, so only the people on the whitelist can join. Now what we're looking for right now is a server.properties file. Uh, you'll see that all these say text. This one says properties. Now you need to right click this and open with notepad um, or you know note plus wordpad. Anything really that can open the text file. And now we should see uh, a bunch of different options here. Now, these are all basically things you can turn on or off, basically settings for the server. Um, right here, we can see generator settings. That's, you can just leave that alone. Allow nether, if you want to allow people to go to the nether or not. Um, if you set this to false, for example, then even if they built the nether portal, they couldn't go to the nether. So I guess if you're hosting on your own computer, that might be a good idea, because um, that way it'll save resources. Now this is where it comes in useful, the level name. Say you created this awesome server, or I mean this awesome map on single player, uh, and you want to bring it over to multiplayer. What you can do is, what you would do is just find the file and drag it in here. Say it was called um, Super Epic World, you know, whatever. Whatever you had it called. And you had it dragged in here. Now what would happen is, if you just ran it without changing it here, it would open the other world. So what we need to do is also change it here super epic world and now instead of loading the regular world it'll load this world so that's the easiest way to um, load a single player world and make a multiplayer or survival maps and that sort of thing now these are all little things you can kind of tweak but the only other thing that's important really would be the max number of players um, you, if you only want to have two people four people hundred people whatever your computer can handle then you can just adjust that we'll say 10 for example um, and then the message of the day. You can say, welcome to my server, whatever, Ryan's server. I'll say Ryan's server. So now when you join, that'll be the message that uh, is when you're trying to connect. 
So once you're done, you just go ahead and hit File Save or Control S. Oh, not File Save S. File Save or Control S, uh, and then you can just go ahead and close it. So now that we have this all set up, what we need to do is set up port forwarding. This is how people can connect to your server. So what we need to do right now is go back to here, um, whatever your browser is, and we need to find out our IP address. So this is what people are going to connect to. So you can just go to google.com and type in what is my IP address. Um, and you'll see a number right here. Mine's blocked, hopefully, if I blocked it right. Um, <laughs> then you won't be able to see it. Um, and it's really not a huge deal if someone gets it. The only thing they can do is just DDoS you, but it kind of gets boring, so it's not really a big deal, you know. Um, but this is how people are going to connect to your server, so just share that, and then people will be able to connect, and I'll explain that again more in a minute. And to uh, set up your router to accept port forwarding, what we need to do is go to run, and then cmd. This is going to open a command prompt. Um, so any other way you can get to this, just open the command prompt and you should get uh, this little thing that pops up. On Windows 8, it's just the same thing. Go to here, type in run, and it'll pop up. Okay. Now what we want to type in is ipconfig. Enter ipconfig um, into this box and hit enter. A bunch of stuff comes up, but what we're looking for right now is the default gateway. <clears throat> so the default gateway is basically the access to the router. What happens is when we type this into our browser, 192.168.1.254, we're going to be able to access our router. All right, so this next part, I'm actually voicing over from uh, my previous video since I have AT&T Uverse, and it's a lot different than most of you guys. So I'm going to be telling you guys uh, based on what most of you would have. So basically, right here, what you're doing is typing your default gateway, whatever was in that box. Uh, you saw mine was 192.168.1.254. Yours could be dot one, dot ten. Look back then, mine was dot one, um, and then either you'll get straight to your router or a password thing will pop up. Uh, you either just need to know that login information. Default is usually admin, and the password is either um, password or admin or default or you know you can look up uh, whatever it is for your router. But basically, it's similar for everybody once you get into it. Uh, what you need to do is find port forwarding um, or port triggering or somewhere in firewall you'll find this and what we need to do is uh, add a custom service now you're gonna wanna call it minecraft server um, or whatever you know if you want just something that you'll recognize it something that you'll know what it's called uh, if you have the option for TCP and UDP make sure you do them both if you only have one or the other you'll just have to make two um, and for starting port and ending port make sure you do 25565 and 25565 twice now for the server IP address, this is where you just put in your IPv4 address. So you can look back into the IP config command prompt, um, and you just have to make sure you remember that they're two different things. So um, to get to your router, you have to do your default gateway, and then in the server IP address, you need to put your IPv4 address. So uh, that's pretty much it, and I'll cut back to the like new video. Alright, so at this point, there's only a few more things we need to do, and then we should be all set to go. At this point, you should have um, your port forwarding set up, so people should be able to connect once we have it all set up. Um, you should have all your files and everything tweaked, so we should be all set to go. Now, there's a few more things we need to do first. Um, so first, go to Start, right-click on Computer, go to Properties, find Advanced System Settings, and then on the bottom, find environmental variables. And now, right here, we need to scroll down until we find something called path, right here. We want to hit edit. There should be a bunch of different characters here with, with whatever you had. Um, you just want to paste this right in. And I'll have this in the description as well. Um, and this is going to help so you don't have a problem where it just opens for a second and then closes. We want to hit OK, hit OK, just keep hitting OK, and we can just close this. Now, we want to create a uh, run.bat file. If you notice, when we open the Minecraft server, it only shows a little bit of um, available memory. So there's only 50 megabytes of running, really, and half of it is being used, that means. So that means there's only 100 megabytes being allocated. So that's not gonna, definitely not going to be enough to run the server, and it's going to be lagging a lot. So what we want to do is create something that allows us to set the amount of RAM we want ourselves. So you want to go to new, 
text document, and we can just call that run. Don't worry about it. Double click, and what we're going to want to do is paste this in. I'll, oh, my bad. I'll have this in the description. Um, let me see if I can figure this out. All right. I'll have this in the description, so you just want to paste that in. You can go ahead and hit File, Save As, and we need to call this run.bat. Make sure you save it as all files, because if you save it as .text, it won't run properly. Go ahead and click Save, and we can close Run. Now we see a file right here called Run, and it says Windows Batch File. When we double click this, if all is right, then it should open up our Minecraft server file. But you can see now 66 megabytes is being used, but 95% is free. That means that we have so much more set. And this is easily changed. So um, really, I have it set to run at 1 gigabyte, but you can change whatever amount you want. Uh, just know that it's in 1,024 increments. So say I want to do 512 megabytes. You just change both of these to 512. Uh, if you want to allocate 2,000, then you do 2,048. I mean, two two gigabytes, 2,048, because um, it goes by megabytes. So really, whatever number you do, um, just know that it's in megabytes, not gigabytes. So if I wanted to put 10 gigabytes, it's 10,000 megabytes, because there's 1,024 megabytes per gigabyte. Uh, if you follow along there, hopefully you did. Now, just be careful. If you only have two gigabytes of RAM on your computer, it's not a good idea to allocate two gigabytes of RAM for the Minecraft server because then it's going to be using all of your RAM and you won't even be able to go onto the server yourself. So I have 16 gigs of RAM so I could easily put whatever amount I want. Um, for example, let's keep it at 248, 2048. And whenever you're done editing it, you just go ahead and file save. You can close it out. And every time you want to run your server, just double click run here instead of double clicking on Minecraft um, server.exe. Now, Let's see if it works. Let's double click Minecraft to open up our Minecraft uh, client, login. A uh, quick note, hopefully you know by now that it only works for premium. Um, if you want to create a cracked server, what you need to do is go to server properties, um, edit, and then you need to set online mode to false. You set it to false. So if you don't have premium or you don't even purchased it, you can go ahead and set it to false and that way you can access it. Alright, so now we go to multiplayer. We can connect to our own server by typing in localhost, and that's how you can check if it's set up right. And we can join our server. Now, hopefully, we'll log in, and we have logged in. So that means that we are all set. Um, you can see we're in survival mode because we haven't set anything differently. Uh, and we can't do any of the commands. So if I want to do game mode, you know, you do not have permission to use this command. That's because you're not up. So what we want to do is go to our HUD, the Minecraft server that's right here. And this is our command console. Now the first thing you want to do is op yourself. So you do op and whatever your username is. So now this is opt and now I'm opt. That means if I want to do slash game mode, now I have access to the command. So I can do game mode zero is survival, one is creative. So I can do game mode one and now I have creative mode. Um, and you can just mess around with that, look up the list of commands. Uh, I'll put a list in the description of a list of server commands you can do. Um, and for the most part that's about it. Again, if I wanted to ban people you can do that here. But let, just real quick, let me show you the server log. If I said um, hi YouTube, you know this is a test, whatever this is a test. Then you can see, first of all, it goes into the console, and it's also in the server log. So right now we can't see it because it's running, but say we shut off the server, stop, and it's going to disconnect me because we close the server. Now if we check the server log right here, we can see, first of all, all the stuff that says loading. Oh, we set the game mode to creative, okay. Um, listening, listening, okay, that's closed. Oh, look right here, set on game mode to creative. Oh. My bad. And we can see hi YouTube. So Jesus, why does it keep doing that? Uh you can see right here, hi YouTube. I think when I click it goes back to the beginning, but yeah it does. But you can see that. Um so this is a useful to have. Definitely suggest keeping that. Oh the one thing I forgot to show you guys really quick is how your friends are going to connect to your server. So say you want your friends to connect to your server. 
what you need to do is go to multiplayer, and instead of doing localhost, because that's you, whatever the IP was, when you typed in in Google, what is my IP, um, you need to give up that IP address, so say it's, I'll just make up some stuff, say it was this, whatever, and then whatever it is, you need to do colon 25565, and then you can join the server. Um, so that all work the same way, and that's how they connect to your server. So if they can't connect, you did something wrong, you might want to go back. It's particularly important forwarding, I'm assuming. Um, but if they can't connect, then you did everything right. And um, then you're all set. And I believe that you are all set to go out into the world of Minecraft and host your very own server. So if this helped you guys out, please leave a big thumbs up. Leave a comment saying this helped. Consider subscribing for more tutorials and Minecraft-related videos. Uh, and stay tuned. Now, a lot of things that people ask about, too, are plugins for the server. Now... If you want to do plugins, you're going to have to have a bucket server. Um, and I also have a tutorial on that, and I'm also creating an updated version of that as well. So stay tuned um, for the updated bucket version tutorial, uh, and you can start doing plugins. So.